Hi, in this video I want to show you how we handle data in the form of lists on your calculator. Then I'm going to show you how to generate a basic set of descriptive statistics for that data. Now your calculator has a lot of functionality when it comes to handling data in lists, but in these videos I'm going to focus on a basic set of skills that you'll be using on a regular basis. I'm also going to show you some keystroke shortcuts because you'll be doing these tasks multiple times. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a problem from your textbook on page 137, problem 31. This problem concerns serum HDL cholesterol levels, and there's a set of 40 data points we're going to be entering into a list. What I suggest you do is, as you're watching the video, periodically pause it so that you can duplicate the tasks I'm doing on your own calculator. What you're looking at on your screen is a emulator of a TI-84 calculator. The keystrokes uh, for the 83's and the 84's are going to be completely the same for these demonstrations. Now, in the middle of the screen we've got a view of the lists on the calculator. There are six default lists that the calculators have, L1 through L6, and you can see three of them shown here. What I want to do first is clear a list so I have a place to put my new data. There are two ways to clear lists on the calculator. The first way is within the list view, so let's go there on the calculator. To get into this list view, you're going to press STAT to get into the STAT window, and that brings up three submenus, Edit, Calc, and Test. Now, the operation of the function that we want is within this first submenu, and it's in fact the first item, Edit. Since that's already highlighted, all I need to do is press Enter and that takes me into the list view. And now you can see that the first item in the first list is highlighted. Now in order to clear this list, what I need to do is arrow up from that entry and that will cause the header to be highlighted, L1. Now what I do is press clear and enter and that clears the first list. Now the other way to clear a list is outside of the list view. So let me go back to the main window by pressing second and then quit which is the shift function over the mode key. So now I'm back on the main window and the function I want is within the stat menu again, again in the first sub menu and it's the fourth item down, clear list. Now you can arrow down to this when it's highlighted, press enter, uh, but it's quicker to use these numbers or indices in front of each of the functions. And since clear list is number four, all I need to do is press four and that puts that command back on my main window. Now I need to tell it what list I want to clear. In this case I want to clear list L2, so I'm going to press second and then L2. Now when I press enter, the second list is cleared. So those are two ways to clear a list. Now I'm going to go back into my stat window, pardon me, into my list window so I can start entering the data points. So again, stat and then enter takes me into list view. To enter the data points, I simply begin typing the values and pressing enter between each one. Okay, I've got 40 data points I need to enter, so I'm going to do a little bit of a time shift here by pausing the video and finishing entering all the data points. Okay, I've entered the last of the 40 data points into L1. What I want to do now is go back to the top of the list. So what I'm going to do is just arrow down once, and that takes me back, uh, loops around to the top of the list. What I want to show you how to do now is, in the event that you make a typo when you enter a data point and you need to fix it. So let's, let's say that the second data point, which we've entered as 56, let's say it was supposed to be 66. In order to change that, you just highlight that value and retype the new value. And then press enter and you can see the 56 is replaced to 66. Okay, so that's how you would correct or change any of the data values in your list. Uh, let me go back and replace it with the value which it was supposed to be 56. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you with lists is kind of a cool feature, and that's how to sort a list. The command for that is in the stat window, so I'm going to press stat, and the second command here, sort A, 
is sort ascending. So I'm going to press 2, and that puts the command back in my main window. Now I need to tell it what list I want to sort. So that's going to be second L1. So I'm going to sort list L1. Press Enter, and you can see now in the list view that that data is now sorted. That's a pretty handy thing to be able to do when you're constructing stem and leaf plots or when you're constructing a frequency distribution table. Okay, the next task I want to show you is how to generate a basic set of descriptive statistics. And the command I need for that is, again, in the stat window, this time I'm going to go to the second submenu, which is calc. So I arrow over to the right once, and the first function is one variable statistics, or one var stats. That's already highlighted, so I'm going to press Enter and put that command on the command line. Now with this command, you usually have to specify what list you want to perform these calculations on. But it defaults to L1, and since our data is in L1, I don't need to specify the list. If I press Enter, it's going to run the statistics on that set of data. And what it generates is a set of 11 data points, 11 statistical quantities. And let's go through those. The first one, X bar, is the mean of the 40 data points. The next one, the summation of x is the sum of the 40 data points. After that, we have the summation of x squared, and that's taking each data point, squaring it, and then summing. So these two, you probably won't be making much use of. But the fourth and fifth items on the list, you probably will be. We have s sub x, and that's the sample standard deviation, and then below that, sigma sub x, which is the population standard deviation. These are going to be commonly used quantities, and this is the quick way to generate these quantities when you're given a set of data. Then we have the sample size n, which is 40. There's an arrow here indicating we need to scroll down to get to the rest of the information. And what that presents is what we call the five number summary. We have min x, which is the lowest value in the data set, q1, the first quartile, then we have the median value, q3, which is the third quartile, and then max x, which is the highest value in the data set. Now what happens when you run one var stats is the calculator computes all of these quantities and it also stores them in variables with the same labels or the same names. So if you need to perform a calculation on any one of these quantities, you can run one var stats and then retrieve the value you need or you can access the stored value. Now let me give you an example of this. There's a quantity called the variance and the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. So if you need to find the variance, what you might do is run one var stats and then get your standard deviation, let's say the sample standard deviation, S sub x. And then what you would be doing is keying back in 10.86086246. Now there's a better way to do it. What you can do is simply retrieve the stored value for sample standard deviation. And to retrieve it, you go to the vars key, the variables key. Um, you want to scroll down or access the fifth item on this list, which is statistics. So I'm going to press 5 to get to that. And then from this window, you can see in this first submenu, um, you've got several of the quantities that we just calculated. And the one we want is number 3, S sub x. So I'm going to press 3 to access that. So in just three keystrokes, I've retrieved that particular value. Now if I want to square it, I use the squaring operation on that, and then I press Enter, and you can see I've got the sample standard deviation squared. This is a better way than simply rekeying the number back in because if you're rekeying the number back in, you're probably going to truncate it and possibly introduce round off error, or you simply might make a mistake typing the number in. So if you can use the value that's stored as a variable, that's a better way to go. The last thing I want to show you on your calculator are just a couple of settings uh, that you want to make sure are correctly set, and that's in the mode key. And I'm looking at the first two lines of this, and the first line concerns notation, and you want the normal notation as opposed to scientific notation or engineering notation. And then the second line, you want the floating point representation of the decimals. Uh, the other values on this line concern rounding off and truncating to a certain precision, and we just want to leave them as floating point decimals. So just check to make sure on your calculator that these two are set correctly. Now in my next video, I am going to show you how to generate a histogram 
from a set of data. And for that video, I'll be using this same set of data that we've entered into L1. So what I suggest you do is if you've got the data in there, is to leave it there, and then you can watch the second video to see how that's done.